Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic University podcast as we do this video reaction to the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania first trailer. I'm here with Jake Christie. I'm Anthony Canton the third. This is a lot of... Uh, we've been waiting for this for a minute. Mm -hmm. And it finally came. So, Jake, I'm going to just throw it to you right fast. Tell me, give me your initial thoughts. Give me everything. What you got? I mean, I think it just... It's a vibe in a way that I think is what a trailer needs to do more than anything else. Uh, I don't need to see big cameos and trailers. I don't need to know the plot, really. Um, and I think that, uh, as people who know me know, I am always in favor of a slowed-down remix of a pop song for a trailer. People say it's been overdone, and I say you can do it until the day I die. Uh, and so... I just was vibing with it and I, you know, it made me excited to see the movie I'm already excited to see. And I'm glad that we get to see, you know, Kang in full form. That was really what the trailer needed to do. And I think it did it well. I think from a nerd fan perspective, if we think about what today and this past weekend has been, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of, a lot of just discussion going around about not only Marvel, but DC too, but just to stay right here. Since He Who Remains came through in Loki at the end of season one of Loki, we wanted to see Kang. We knew that this was coming, and there was just a level of excitement with Jonathan Majors attached to this that we've been waiting for. I know personally me, as somebody who on this podcast has been talking since 2018 about Kang showing up, this is really exciting for me from a comic book fan perspective. So. Just to see him and the suit was incredibly exciting. My curiosity about his wants, what is mm -hmm. his objective? Like mm -hmm. all of those things come to my mind as I think about what we see here. But also when it comes to this trailer, the visuals, mm -hmm. the visuals of the quantum realm were really, really lively. It seems like there's a lot of stuff happening there. I think the highlighting and continuing the family relationship between Scott and Cassie, Hope, Jan, and Hank, that, mm -hmm. that you know, continuing that vibe as we, as we move into this third film seems to be the highlight of this trailer if you want to talk besides Kang and what the mm -hmm. quantum realm is going to look like. And it just looks like this very immersive, wild mm -hmm. place with different types of beings so yeah i think just establishing that off the bat it seems like peyton reed has cooked something up mm -hmm. that is going to be intriguing on a lot of levels yeah i think that that's the thing that i found most interesting was like what is the quantum realm going to be because obviously when we've seen it we've really only seen it in like what we now kind of realize is the wilderness of the quantum realm and if you're going to have a movie that takes place primarily in the quantum realm it needs to have a livelihood to it. And it almost feels like the space wild west is what the vibe that I got from it. Um, and it, it feels very much like, I mean, the, the song choice is appropriate. It feels very much like an Oz yellow book road type situation where it <laughs> is, you open up the can of worms of like, what is this place? You know? Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see the way that it builds its own world. Cause I think that that's always an exciting thing to do and i think that marvel in a lot of ways has has a, i think a mixed bag in terms of creating worlds like yes. i i've talked a lot about how i think their complete inability to establish asgard as a noble place is one of the big failures of the mcu but also i feel like in, in saying the same franchise like even though it's not fully explored i feel like there's a lot of cool stuff they do on the car for example that they have like a world there that you get kind of so i have confidence in peyton reed given that i think the Ant-Man films are good. I think he's a good director. And I think most of all, like he seems really to care in a way. Um, and that's half the battle, uh, especially when it comes to taking big swings. Like I just want to know your heart's in it. And it feels very much like his heart's in it. Uh, and yeah, there's just so much weird visual shit that you see. And while it obviously does just look like it's done on a green screen, because it was, it doesn't feel like some of the Love and Thunder stuff where it feels like lazy. It feels kind of like the point where it is like... It's, it's intentional. Bizarre. Yeah. It's yeah. not supposed to look real because you're, you're not actually in a physical space, really. You're in atoms. 
Yes, absolutely. And I think the the fact that, to your point, that we're spending more time here in this film, I think underscores kind of the the reality of what the situation is as this movie kicks off phase five. We are in the midst of the multiverse saga. Mm -hmm. We are introduced to our big bad in all of his glory. And we're going to see why is Kang there? What's the story with Jan? Because I think they highlighted a couple of Mm -hmm. things about Jan in this trailer. One, her being upset Mm -hmm. about Cassie doing anything Mm -hmm. with the quantum realm. And then even just her covering herself um, as she's walking by in some of the shots as if maybe some of these people or beings know her. Mm -hmm. So as she was down there for in a lot of ways an infinite amount of time, Mm -hmm. her story, it gets highlighted here in a way that seems like she's going to be an essential element of the film. And I'm happy about that because it does suck that they have Michelle Pfeiffer doing basically nothing in uh, Ant-Man and the Lost. Not that she she has a good (laughs) style. Like, I think... She's actually when she's on screen, she's actually like great because she's fucking Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. But I'm glad that it, I hope that they get that she gets to be like the crux of it because it is as someone who like who defends these movies to people who are big film nerds. A thing I can't actually defend is when they're like they get really super serious actors to do nothing on screen. I'm like that is kind of true. Uh, <laughs> so like I I do hope that they give her a lot to do because I think that also her character in this movie has the most immediately interesting reality like she lived in the quantum realm you know and that's a yeah. thing we don't understand and so that's really really exciting to see how to fill in those gaps because we just know that she was in the quantum realm for like you said an infinite amount of time really because time works differently down there and so like what was she up to what enemies did she make you know uh all these things are things that once again what the trailer is very successful at is it raises those questions and i don't want to know those answers until i walk into the theater Exactly. And I think the I think something else before I go back to Kang stuff is this this trailer kind of puts Scott in a in an interesting place as as it starts. He just seems like he's gotten past the whole ex con mm-hmm. thing. He's celebrated to a degree as mm-hmm. even he gets the thank you Spider Man uh, <laughs> portion of the proceedings. Mm-hmm. But I think Scott's in a different place now. What we actually haven't gotten to really see Scott be a hero in mm. the film so far. I think a lot of them have been either family rescue mm. or there was an instance in Civil War where he was helping Cap out. So we haven't really seen the like Endgame. Yeah, he was involved a little bit with the whole getting the 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 truck going with mm-hmm. the quantum realm. But we haven't got to see him be heroic. And mm. I think this sets the stage really when you think about it as this particular person versus somebody who is as one of the big, big bads in Marvel and mm-hmm. Kang. So how they how they make that work intrigues me because yeah. this is not exactly the person that you would say no oh let's put this person up against kang first but i think it's interesting because i would argue that other than spider-man scotland is probably the most inherently good hero they have because marvel Agreed. has while they don't have any like really morally great characters like of all the like, spider-man and ant-man are the two that come to mind who are like no matter what do the right thing like can't be and when I say the right like it's even like someone like Captain America obviously always wants to do the right thing, but you can imagine him like making a call that's like morally gray to do this side or the other. Like Scott is so purely good where that like you can imagine him him really having a tough choice between like saving the world or saving one some person he cares about or something like that. And mm-hmm. I think that he is such a in a way an interesting foil to Kang if we're gonna get so much more of Kang. I think putting him up against someone who maybe is not necessarily as equal, but will meet whatever evil scheme Kang has with just like light is a really good way of introducing the character. And it also gives Ant-Man something to do. And I think that he, I like that they're giving him this, you know, I don't need, I, I, I'm I've, I'm confident that this is the best way to introduce the character of Kang because frankly he's going to meet anyone everyone anyway. Yeah. And I think that 
you can establish him and his motives and who he is very well when you have a character who is so diametrically different that Kang can kind of really show who he is because Scott won't understand him otherwise. Because Scott just does not understand the, doesn't really understand villainy. Right, right, exactly. And to to bring it back to Kang, I think the thing that excites me, and I remember when we discussed this back in the Loki season finale, was now we get to see Jonathan Majors acting chops Mm -hmm. in full force because now we're going to start to see the different versions Mm -hmm. as there's there's obviously Kang, maybe at some point I'm thinking Kang Dynasty, Scarlet Centurion, Mm -hmm. and Rama Tut. Iron Lad at some point if they decide to go that route. But I think like just that we're going to start to see those differences and what they look like just from a a technical standpoint is going to be really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And also I'll just add like from a, from a character standpoint, like Kang is one of the smartest Mm -hmm. characters in the universe, like it just overall. So there is a portion of that, that just, bringing him into this and i think you what you mentioned about scott being true is kind of the perfect foil in that sense is going to make for just an an intriguing clash of styles Mm -hmm. and then just finding out the motivations i think the motivations of this particular uh, of this particular villain and why he's doing whatever it is that he's doing is intriguing and we got to see that right off the bat yeah and you know there's just the little things too that are put in there obviously we see the first appearance of bill murray which confirms yes. that he's in it i know that it was already confirmed that he was in it but like with bill murray you never really know until it's on film <laughs> um this is true. and so like that's exciting uh there's obviously some other people that are suspected to be in it that we haven't seen yet uh you know a certain bald man who might be in a different situation uh but there, it gave me just enough um I, it, it, they have you know what i'm glad that evangeline and lily was like i had a weird haircut in the first one i had a normal haircut in the second one we got to bring it back to the first one um mm-hmm. no disrespect uh and you know i'm excited to see adult uh cassie um even though like technically speaking the actress they cast is even if you use the five-year jump she's still like five six years too old but whatever uh they always right. do that um <laughs> but i uh, i'm a big fan of Catherine newton she's really talented um, and I'm excited to see uh, them fight alongside each other because it's a fun dynamic that we really haven't seen before. I, I don't think like of a like a grown adult character and like of a, ch- a child character of one of the main protagonists. Yeah. It's a very interesting vibe because she's obviously going to want to be fighting and in, involved, and he's going to be like, "No, I need to protect you," et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I know I'm saying these things like they're cliches, but if they're done well, they're good. No, absolutely. It could be definitely compelling. Again, there's always the Young Avengers element in the in the background. If you want to start building Cassie towards that, and this is the perfect opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, I think the only other thing in the 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 one visual in the trailer that really like stood out to me, besides all of the Quantum Realm folk, was when Ant-Man is running alongside another Mm Ant-Man that seems to get torn apart Mm -hmm. by whatever's happening in there, that was like, Oh, okay. So this is getting a little, it's getting a little tricky and whatever Kang's, um, it seems like Kang's base of operation. It seems pretty expansive too. Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty big stuff. So there's a lot to, there's a lot to mull over in these couple of months as we get ready for this movie. But I think, kicking off phase five like this is just it's just as good as it could get mm-hmm. really i mean just I, your, it, I, I i can't speak for it because it's your thing but i feel like it smells a little seafoody in here but it doesn't feel like they're actually cooking seafood right well I, I i gotta be honest it seems like they have pulled the fish grease out for this <laughs> it is it's it's definitely happening like i i feel like this is gonna be one of those events. Mm. And I think the fact that it's an Ant-Man movie just shows again how the MCU can make these things spectacles. Um, I, I am curious how it's going to do because I feel like I'm, they kind of build Doctor Strange as that, even though Doctor Strange actually is not that. But they advertised it like it was, and it did not right. perform that well. I mean, obviously it did incredibly well, but it did not perform right. as well as 
it would have it what you would imagine the big event is now i think that this is actually going to probably do better than doctor strange because i think that the word of mouth will probably be better because it's just going to be a more fun movie but i am interested to see how it does box office wise can you get an avengers level box office if the movie does not have the word avengers on it we will see uh that i think that's a i think that's a very fair point and that's why I'm also looking forward to Wakanda Forever and see what the response. I mean, Wakanda is. Forever is going like to make a billy. It's gonna I mean, make it's going to blow. It's going to blow. It's going to. That's the thing. Like it's going to. Like in comparison to something like that, mm -hmm. it, that it, that's interesting too. And you know, there's a lot of box office stuff that gets thrown out always. And like uh, people movies. don't know what they're talking about. Uh, it's I don't ever like to pull this card. But if your only entrant <laughs> into movie discussion is superhero stuff. I don't trust your opinion on box office stuff because I just don't believe that you know how it works. <laughs> like, it's just like, like, it just is not. I mean, for example, like. No, yeah. not a lot of people do. I mean, people don't even look at. I think in a lot of instances, people don't even do the simplistic thing and just look at what the budget of these films yes. are. And then that's kind of where you and start. And also, you have to know that if with a budget, especially if it's a big budget movie, you almost have to double the budget to count for advertising. Uh, you have to. And you have to think about how much money they're looking to make. Um, so like, yeah, a movie might double its budget in the box office, but that's, if it's a $200 million movie, that's still definitely a failure. Um, and so, yeah, just, I don't want to be, I'm I realize I'm sounding gatekeepy, but it is nah, also, no, 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 talk it. You know, people why? don't because know I what think... they're talking about when it comes to box office and right. it's frustrating. Right. Exactly. And I think the best example of this lately has been how people like, especially when we talk about like Warner brothers and everything that they've mm -hmm. gone through recently the shelving of bat girl and everything alongside that like the discussions about like what money actually is mm -hmm. and what makes what and what doesn't make what mm -hmm. i think is stuff that if you don't do the research and you don't do the reading then maybe you probably shouldn't yeah it. and probably. also just like thinking about international and what have you and like that's gonna oh, that's, that's gonna it. be a thing with black adam is that black adam is gonna be kind of a disappointment in the states but it looks like it will yes. be pretty good internationally and will be a uh, like a single as opposed to it's out there's different things like that but yeah so and my, anyway this is a larger way of just saying that just like acquaint yourself with uh the, i mean i'll be honest the actual answer is don't acquaint yourself with the finance of these companies this is not that interesting don't worry about it <laughs> if, if you don't have to do if you don't do this for a living or make any money from right. it don't be concerned exactly. about the box office <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes tangent, absolutely. But, you know and I feel like that. I feel like at this point, the fact that we've gotten the budgets here would uh, say that our time is just about yes, up. Exactly. <laughs> in terms of 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 Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, we'll be talking about this movie when it comes out and whatever we get from it as we get to it. So, but Jake, uh, well, give me your follows before we roll out here at the Jake Christie. Thank you for watching. And thank you, thank you for watching at Anthony Canton underscore three. Follow the show at MC University Pod. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, MC University Pod. Appreciate y'all for listening and watching. We'll be back. Talk to you soon.